You're tuned in to Nerd Overload, your weekly show for video games, movies, TV shows, comics, tech news, and more. Now your hosts, Cody Pinnock, Samantha Cross, Sam Dunham, and Josh Harrison. Hey everybody, welcome to Nerd Overload, the pop and geek culture show that's been working at it for six hours but still can't get this can of beans open. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cody, and I'm thinking about those beans. I'm Sam, and I enjoy... What did he say to his child oh. about the the pleasure of the beans? I'm Josh, and I love that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> I'm Samantha, and my favorite beans are on my cat. <laughs> oh, we have a great show for you this week. Thank you all for tuning in. Welcome to 2021, you guys. Woo! Woo. That, that was an extended break. Yeah, a little bit, but we're back now, and we're we're excited to give you all of that sweet, sweet beans. popping, all that beans sweet, footage. sweet beans. <laughs> God. We're gonna spill the beans. Yep, we're gonna spill all those beans about the uh, the pop and geek culture uh, <laughs> news here. So um, before we get into some of the news, though, let's talk about some things we have been checking out. Check it out. I don't know. That's just the first one I picked. <laughs> It's been a few weeks. I mean, you can't go wrong with Chewbacca. Can't go with, wrong with Chewbacca. That's right. So, uh, Unless you're talking about the last sequel movie. And then they made some big mistakes <laughs> regarding Chewbacca. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and get into some things we've been checking out. So, um, I don't know. I watched Wonder Woman 84. Yeah, as did we. Okay. All right. We can definitely get into some of that. Uh, now, Josh, you haven't seen it yet, have you? No. Okay. But you guys can talk about it. I really, I'm not worried about it. Oh, okay. Well, go, go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you mean beans. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, let's, um, uh, we're probably going to go into some spoilers on it. It's been out for, well, since Christmas, so it's been a few weeks. Um, that, it's not that hard to see it. You don't even have to leave your house. You really don't. <laughs> and as we're going to get into our review of it, there aren't really any spoilers no, there's nothing that happens that is that surprising. Yeah. So I want to preface what I'm about to say by saying I enjoy this movie. I liked it. I thought it was fine. I thought it was good. I wouldn't stop anyone from going to see it. Having said that, uh, there were some issues. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I did not like it. Yeah. I, I enjoyed the the time spent in the in the world of Wonder Woman. I enjoyed most of the time spent in, in the world of Wonder Woman. I, I thought it was a little long, to be yeah. honest with you. It was maybe a little too much time spent in the world of Wonder Woman. <laughs> now, more than anything, I think that might be my chief complaint, is that it needed a good, solid 40 to 45 minutes chopped out. There's no reason why that movie needed to be two and a half, almost three hours long. And There's it, no reason for no. it. And it just makes a lot of weird character choices that... It, it kind of does. I wouldn't have expected... And not in a good way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, right off the bat, it's kind of weird that the movie was so long that it needed two intro sequences. Yeah. It's like they couldn't choose between setting up the uh, Amazonian games at the very beginning or Wonder Woman in 1984 stopping a bunch of criminals. It's like they couldn't choose which <laughs> intro because they were both in themselves. They were both perfectly good. They were excellently done, and I think that uh, the the stopping the crimes at the mall in the uh, the second intro is probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie. To that be was honest, really good. Yeah. it was really really well done. But when you can't choose between one or the other, the answer is not do both. Why did we have to go back to the mascara? It doesn't come up in the movie at all. Because Robin Wright Penn needed a paycheck, I guess. Yeah, and they had to. There was a bunch of amazon characters that they kind of shoehorned in showing there during the the games kind of yeah like that at least look like some established characters yes and no kind of i i suppose i suppose but the movie never went back to themiscara it never touched back on any i mean i understand the themes that they're trying to set up you know don't take the easy way out although i would argue that what child diana did during those games was not cheating but in fact being resourceful yeah. with her surroundings i don't think she was <laughs> cheating at it but still i i can understand they're setting up the theme for the movie 
going on to the end. If the movie did a better job highlighting that theme throughout, I would, you know, I I would be more on board with that intro. But as it stands, it kind of was a little weak. Uh, okay, some good things. Some good things. Um, Kristen Wiig was awesome. Yeah, she was. She both she and Pedro Pascal were probably the best part of the movie. Yeah, they were both tremendous villains, which yeah. is not something you can say about almost any Marvel movie. So they got that going for Abs- them. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh I mean, it is kind of weird how a lot and it's this isn't just DC, but it's Marvel too. A lot of movies, uh superhero movies fall back on the the villain is a misunderstood kind of geeky normie who wants to get a little tiny bit of power just go off the deep end. You have your your cheetah in this movie. You have uh, uh, Catwoman, the Riddler in uh, Batman Forever, um, uh, the villain of the Ghostbusters, the Lady Ghostbusters movie. Villain, yeah, that's one. Um, well, uh, uh, Electro in Amazing Spider-Man Two, oh, yeah, was this character. It's kind. It's just kind of weird that they always fall back on that. Although, if you're basing on on the comics, that is kind of the character a little bit. That's a big issue in uh, reality these days as well. It kind of is. Yeah. (laughs) But still, like, we don't need every one of them to be that way. (laughs) Sure, sure. Give me me a confident villain. Give me a a kingpin or someone along those lines. Dark side. Well, hmm. (laughs) give me a bad guy that just likes being a bad guy. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> like exactly. <a> Skeletor. <laughs> or yeah. Dr. Do- Dr. Doom's just kind of like, I'm a bad guy. Yeah. You know, See, that's... Because I'm the best guy. Everybody should do what I say. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree with you there. And I really liked Pedro Pascal. I, uh, yeah. I was familiar with the character that he is, ba- that his character was based off on the comics, Max Lord. Um, he's a little different in the comics than in the movie, but I think the, with the story they wanted to tell, I think he fit in really, really well into that role. And boy, oh boy, he sure wasn't based on any modern day um, (laughs) person that is constantly on everybody's minds all the time for better or ill. (laughs) Boy, he wasn't based on anyone at all. No. (laughs) Especially when he was a a charlatan who ended up in the White House. (laughs) Boy, oh boy. (laughs) Okay, so... Uh, a guy that started out by being obnoxious on television. Yeah. And then at one point was into the White House. Yeah. Yeah. Not <laughs> like anyone else currently. Sure. Surely not. Uh, but uh, but no, he did a fantastic job. And I think uh, the, the third act kind of twist or the third act of the third act because the movie was so long. <laughs> uh, that twist kind of uh, it really humanized him in a way that I wasn't expecting and it's it wrapped up really well it does make me kind of wonder when Batman is in uh, Justice League so Batman is going through and trying to you know f- drum up all the files about all of the uh, future members of the Justice League basically and he uh, finds one sole picture of Wonder Woman <laughs> in in World War One, and it's like wow this person has ne- was never seen again Except for that time when the world almost ended in 1984. <laughs> I wonder if these are the same people. Probably not. I think that movie's probably not canon anymore. <laughs> it's it's canon until I'm told otherwise. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> so that um, that kind of throws that whole thing right right out the window. I mean, they <laughs> they're so bad about messing up their own <laughs> like their own canon and their own universe. <laughs> It's it's almost embarrassing the way DC does it. I think they made some awfully big missteps with the characterization of Wonder Woman. I think her Or lack thereof. Yeah, I think her pining for Steve Trevor for forty years really weakens her and is really a misstep. <laughs> yeah, I think I I think I agree with you. I, I it's it's interesting that Patty Jenkins, you know, she directed the first one, but she didn't write the first one. Uh, She wrote this one, and she's going to be writing Wonder Woman 3, which is on our news. We might as well go ahead and mention that (laughs) now. They're making a Wonder Woman 3 based on the uh, uh, box office and HBO Go sales, I guess. Now we have to figure that in. Um, (laughs) 
How, but do, you, how do you even measure A that? lot of people watched it. A lot of people watched it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, Patty Jenkins has said that the movie, um, it's all about female empowerment and strong female characters. And it's kind of weird to say that when your main character has almost no personality except boy, I sure do miss my boyfriend. Yeah. And the one of the main villains initially got jealous of Wonder Woman because of her shoes. And also, it makes her seem like a very crappy friend. Yes. Because as soon as she gets Steve Trevor back, she's... She's done with... Completely ignoring... Uh, yeah. She's completely Barbara, done with Barbara. Who's coming into a lot of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> it was not... I don't think it hit quite the way uh, the direct, the writer and director really wanted it to, or really thought it it, it should. Wonder um, Woman's supposed to be that human ideal, like kind of like Superman. Like she should be better than us. She should know to be there for her friend, even when things are happening in her own life. Like, yeah, not just wait until it's almost too late and then say, Barbara, no, you have to. Give back all your all your beauty and super strength because <laughs> he's making you mean. <laughs> Waiting until she's a literal cat. Woman. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so this uh, makes me sad because the first Wonder Woman was so good. It was incredibly good, and it the, again, this movie's still good. I still enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. There's just a lot of problems with it. The yeah. first one is one of my hands down favorite superhero movies it's like way oh, yeah. up there yeah yeah <laughs> and ah, y- yeah <laughs> so okay so at the very end when everyone around the world is okay so main plot of the movie i guess Just elevator pitch we got a guy who gains the ability to make people's wishes come true but is able to, but it's all like the monkey's paw yeah. kind of situation where which they bring up like three times. They do because <laughs> because otherwise the movie did not make clear why Max Lord was going through trying to wish everyone make everyone's wishes come true because he because he was the monkey's paw. He was able to manipulate the inverse of the wish of the wish. So instead of using a magic rock, which there is a magic MacGuffin rock <laughs> that grants one wish with one monkey's paw, he wished that he would become the rock so that he could. Dwayne mi- Johnson. He <laughs> wished, I was he trying wished, to think of. I was trying to think of a joke yeah. how to fit that in there. He wished he was the rock, Dwayne Johnson. No, that was Kumail Nanjiani. Yeah. And then it happened. And then it happened. <laughs> but at what cost? <laughs> Did you see that picture of Kumail? With like his his plate full of chicken and his gingerbread house around Christmas. No. Oh my god. <laughs> he is more steroid than man at this point, and that's a shame. Hey mom, can we can we stop and get some rock? We have rock at home. The rock at home. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what Max Lord is doing. He's going around and he's making people's wishes come true, but the then, bad things but are then happening. in return he is taking something from them. And the whole thing culminates with him standing in a magic blue vortex, making wishes around the world come true. And Wonder Woman is, tells the world, please, no, tell everyone that you don't want your wish anymore. Did the cheetah wish herself back to normal? Or no, not? she did not. I, that's, I was thinking the same they, thing. They, they, yeah, she never, she never gave that back. She never gave it. Yeah, she might be the only. It's kind of weird to think that she's the only person on the entire on the planet earth to go that selfish that's yeah yeah Yeah, that's i was immediately like well this would never happen yeah i'm too cynical to believe this is real this could ever occur i mean at the very least that guy who got all of those cows (laughs) keep those cows that's milk it's free milk man (laughs) it's just weird and the whole subplot with steve i keep wanting to say steve rogers it's not steve rogers steve trevor steve trevor's Trevor Stevens. He's not all that different, really. Chris Pine. <laughs> Chris, yeah. <laughs> Captain Kirk, whatever. Uh, Captain but, Pine. Captain Pine Kirk. <laughs> DC's Captain which, America. Which is, which is my favorite furniture cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Pine Kirk, yes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that whole subplot, I mean, I, I understand why they needed to put that in the movie because Chris Pine had another movie in his contract and you needed to have Wonder Woman do something 
I guess she needed some stakes and I guess wishing her boy- dead boyfriend back to life kind of at the expense of her losing her powers or kind I, of. I, I took it <laughs> I took it as her life force. I, I didn't take it as full blown just losing her powers and becoming mortal. I thought she was like literally withering away because she is basically giving the life force to Although I got confused with that at one point because I thought initially she was losing her powers because of Cheetah's wish, wishing that she was like yeah they were like transferring that over they again. that it was like siphoning Maybe off of it was, but, I don't know. <laughs> but it's not because when when uh, when Wonder Woman wished her dead boyfriend back to the void, that's when all of her <laughs> uh, wounds started healing. That was that whole shot. Go back to hell, Steve. <laughs> Go back to hell where you belong. <laughs> yeah, it's also and so he was, he was in somebody else's body. Yeah, which everybody is weird. It's weird, and I, I I could see the strands. Steve Trevor in the comics was a character named the Nemesis from the 1930s and brought back in the 70s. And his whole thing was he didn't have any powers, but he was a super spy. And he had his gimmick was he had a bunch of he was an expert at um, disguise. disguise. So he constantly looked like someone else. So I get, I guess, the strands that when they brought him back, he looks like someone else to everyone except Wonder Woman. It is kind of weird that she immediately like jumps into bed with him, despite it not being, being his body, being to his use. body. <laughs> And and it's played for laughs at the very end. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, again, reading maybe a little too in between the lines. Maybe we're supposed to take this all at face value, whatever. And, like, does... It still feels weird. Does Wonder Woman, like, literally see him as Steve Trevor? Or... Oh, no, definitely not. That was for us. Okay. That's not for... That wasn't for her. That was for us. <laughs> that was so we wouldn't get confused and Chris Pine could be on the poster. <laughs> Fight scenes were good though. Fight, mm, the fight car, scenes were the car one was cool. The car one was cool. The intro one was cool. That la, that last fight scene with the cheetah was a CGI nightmare. Oh, so like that the was first all one. in the dark. You couldn't like the first one. Yeah, you couldn't see anything. And also, what was the point of the golden wingsuit? It looked cool. Well, yeah, it looked oh, cool. Her, uh, <laughs> Kingdom Come armor. Yeah. Well, is that what that was? That's what it was based on. It's... <sighs> and that's who Linda Carter was. Yeah, they did bring Linda Carter in. That very, was very, very good. That was awesome. <laughs> I was I was also very, very happy to see Linda Carter pop up. That was that was cool. I guess there that was the one surprise. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry for spoilers. Now no, that I think about it, no. that was a surprise. When the, movie, when the movie was coming out, they said Linda Carter was going to be in Aww. it. Although when they when they flashed to that one brief shot where it was just her eyes in the golden armor, I was immediately like, "Yeah, that's Linda Carter. <laughs> that's absolutely." Uh, it the CG. Some of the CG shots did not look great, though. There were some shots of Gal Gadot uh, running that it, <laughs> it, it did was kind of look like a weird cartoon. It lo- <laughs> yes, it was. It was very much. Hey, this is a green screen. <laughs> Just sta- it's almost like she's standing in place, and you know how that's- it looks like when you're AT&T, running in place. It looks like the AT and T ad with the- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit that you see on the internet all the time. Yeah, yeah. It. I like the movie. I, I like the movie. <laughs> there's just a lot to when there's almost three hours of movie and only an hour and forty five minutes worth of plot. <laughs> you're gonna have things to pick apart. <laughs> it's. Uh, mm. But it had a it had a, a a lot of really good ideas. Its heart was in the right place. It <laughs> it is by far not the worst DC superhero movie <laughs> I've seen. No, it was watchable. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Justice League. Yeah. It Wah. wasn't Batman v Superman: colon, Dawn of Justice. Womp. <laughs> it wasn't Man of Steel. Womp. It was close to Man of Steel. <laughs> oh, Man was- of Steel is at least watchable. And, and, until it becomes a CGI nightmare at, at the end. At least he didn't murder anyone. No, that's true. There was no murder. Uh, she I, did fall child first into that street. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit. But the kid was okay, though. Yeah. <laughs> it was almost like Hawk from uh, G.I. Joe. He's okay. Yeah. 
Duke is dead. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I did like some of the East, some of the uh, Easter egg hints at um, comic based characters that they threw into the movie. Like they mentioned the um, pseudo Egyptian Iranian country of Baelia. That's straight from the comics. That's whenever they want to use. It's always Baelia and Kandak. Those are the two <laughs> Middle Eastern uh, non-countries that don't exist in the real world. Kandak. That's where that's where Jason Todd died. Kandak is where the Black Adam was the Shazam for ancient oh. Egypt, but it's not Egypt. I thought Kandak was where uh, Joker was buying nuclear weapons. From you know Paris. what? Maybe. Maybe that is the case. It's been a long time since I've read uh, Death in the Family. But, uh, but no, Baelia is the other one. And so they, they name check that. They name check. Um, they don't bring oh, in. They also go to war with each other a lot. They, yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, they also, um, they don't bring in uh, Metamorpho, but they name check Simon Stagg, mm. who was the major, who is the like the major antagonist. Metamorpho. Kind of met, creates Metamorpho, the, the elemental man. Uh, he was the guy that, um, uh, the older gentleman that uh, Maxwell Lord goes to once he gets the powers. Uh. And gets him for tax evasion or something like that. There were a couple other like little minor kind of things, but and that was kind of neat to spot out. I was really kind of hoping uh, Simon Stagg would ha- would mention more of Rex Mason or, or a his pro- or a project or his uh, his part uh, caveman uh, bodyguard Java. Mm, oh yeah, <laughs> these are real things from the comics. <laughs> At least it's not like Shazam is like here's a battering. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't totally in your face about yeah. it. That's that's very true. Over, think, overall, think, I would give it maybe a six and a half out of ten. It's still good. It's still watchable. If you have HBO Plus, it's worth it's worth it. HBO yeah. Plus. HBO Plus Max. Yeah. Hulu Max Plus Flix. <laughs> Tubi. <laughs> now with Shudder. Ever, now with Shudder, yeah. <laughs> Now I just need to make t-shirts that say favorite streaming service. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you guys watch Soul? I haven't no, watched it I, yet. I watched okay. It. Uh, watch it. It's very, very good. I've heard and, nothing and but good things. And maybe we'll talk about it later. That might be what I watch this weekend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So spe- speaking of uh, comic references. Okay. I watched uh, season two of Harley Quinn. Okay. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Space Cabbie shows up. That's awesome. That's true. <laughs> I haven't caught up on season two of Harlequin. I need to. It's on HBO Max Go. Hulu. Max Go Plus. <laughs> Hulu Flix. <laughs> Who Flix. <laughs> Which is the Dr. Seuss version of Max. I, I was, I, I thought, you, I thought you were either going to go Dr. Who or the oh, Whoville. Yeah. I'm, sur- I'm Horton surprised. Horton here's a Who Flix. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't go the Doctor Who direction. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, especially since we've kind of caught up on the yeah. last season. I am still so far behind. It's fine. Now is that the one with the scarf? That's where I'm at. <laughs> at one point, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, technically, the scarf does make reoccurring appearances. The, the scarf and the yeah. jelly babies. Mm, those are so good. They are. <sighs> we haven't watched the latest one, the New Year's special, but we watched everything previous. Mm. I haven't watched anything since Capaldi regenerated. Wow. Yeah, I've like I haven't had BBC. You you've got so it's on HBO Max. Oh, is it? Yes. Yeah. Nice. That's how we were able to catch up. But yeah, it's fine. Uh, none of them are real standouts, but none mm. of them are terrible, which is not exciting. To I know hear, there's a, a, a another yeah. diff- another different person as the master. Yeah, there's a, there's a new master, and he's very good. He has a very chaotic energy about him, which I appreciate. Oh, he's a he's a good master. <laughs> not as fun as Missy, but not many things are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <sighs> she was so good. Yeah. <laughs> She's good on Sabrina too. Oh yeah, that's right. She's uh, I, yeah, she, Zelda or Hilda? Oh, no, no, she no she's not. Neither. She is Madam Satan. Oh, that shows you how much of she is, uh, she's uh, she's Sabrina. Mother, I've watched. She's Mother of Demons. Yeah. Oh well, there you go. Is that she's Madam Satan or Lilith? She Lil- Lilith? She's Lilith. That's it, Lilith. Ah, Madam Satan is a different thing. Hmm. That's like a, a royalty free like old. Super, not superhero, but comic book character. Oh, I think. gotcha. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh man, I have so many check it outs, but I feel like we have no time anymore. Yeah, we're kind of. You, you know what? Uh, we have a couple minutes. Why don't you pick one? Ooh. For what? What's the first one that comes to your mind? I've been playing a lot of Star Wars Squadrons. Okay. It's really good. It is really good. <laughs> it's also very hard because they purposely make it harder for mouse and keyboard users. That's not cool. I played it in VR, so I don't know. Yeah, uh, Matt's been playing it in VR. <laughs> uh, but no, I like it. Um, as much as I love the Empire and I love TIE Fighters and stuff, you pretty much get stomped almost all the time. <laughs> X-Wings are so much cooler, though. Well, all the, all the Republic <laughs> ships have shields, and only two TIE Fighters have shields, and they're not even that good. Can we agree that in the Star Wars universe, X-Wing, TIE Fighter, Y-Wing is at the bottom? Oh, Y-Wing's always at the bottom. Yeah. Just ask Gail. Gail Simone will tell yeah, you how Y-Wings. Y-Wings are. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I pilot Y-Wing a lot because I do a lot of fleet battles, and I'm typic- typically a designated bomber. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a like, huge like just loadout. I mean, the game's cool. I mean, I like it a lot. Uh, though the... <laughs> Some of the community and some of the games is kind of real salty on the online stuff. Oh, online gamers being salty? Oh, I know, yeah. right? Real quick, Star Wars Squadrons is the uh, flight combat game that EA just put out. Star Wars. Yeah, EA, well, EA <laughs> put out Star Wars. published it and Motive made it. Yeah. But it's 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 really good. Um, it's very beautiful. It's really, like all, the, like, all the different maps and mission places are really cool to look at. Like, nothing feels... Really, all like like uh, like two maps are never the same. Though Cody, Cody I just like the way you <laughs> you described it. <laughs> EA's new flight simulator, Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what it is. I mean it's exactly what it is. Yeah, <laughs> it even has like a, a a a simulation mode where you can completely turn off your HUD and just go off the instruments in your cockpit. Oh, nice! That does sound pretty cool. The VR disconnect between holding a controller and looking at all these controls in the ship sucks. So, oh, but really? there's nothing they can really do except so if they sold you a hundred and fifty dollar pod. Con- yeah, how pod to sit in. <laughs> they'll sell they'll sell you a uh, um a cockpit. What what was that game? The Steel Battalion. Steel Battalion. Controller. Yes. Oh, I would kill for that because I. You know how hard it is right now to find flight sticks and whatnot. It is ridiculous mm-hmm. because of uh, this and uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah. Which I hear is very good. I saw an article about the snow it was really pretty. <laughs> I've never, I'm not huge. Like this is the first flight simulator, quote unquote, that I've really gotten into. I've beaten the game. I've beaten the whole story mode. It's not bad. There aren't many name dropped characters. There's only a couple. And even then the the other one is only if you've read the books. That's fine. I don't need, I don't need to see a Skywalker to enjoy. Oh, you Star don't. War. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> you see Hera from Rebels. That's cool. I like her. Yep. All right. Well, hey, let's go ahead and take a break here. And when we come back, we'll get into some news. Hey, we're back. That was Kiss from a Rose by Seal. Not Kiss by a Rose, turns out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fun fact. Yeah. That but, disconnected uh, my brain. Yeah. 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 Let's go ahead and... Uh, Why did we choose that song? The good question. We're about to find out when we get into the news. You know, every time I hear Samantha's laugh in the recording, you know it's coming. It's, yeah. I know I look at her because I'm expecting her to laugh because you're playing the dang, the dang song of me singing terribly. I forgot that uh, we had to tee up the sound effect. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so did I. It's been a couple of weeks. Yeah. So, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about some stuff. We played that song because Warner Brothers and DC Entertainment movies whatever uh have announced what their future plan for their batman movies hope you like batman and (laughs) lots of it yeah they have plans for what was it like six batman movies two a year starting in 2022 spread between theatrical and uh hbo max so much batman that's a lot of batman I thought it was six Batman movies in two years. Maybe I heard it backwards. Okay, that might, yeah. Six movies in a year. (laughs) 
One every month. Yeah. <laughs> every two months, you get a new Batman. Six movies in a season. And each Batman is a different actor. Everyone's it's, Batman. It's like those KFC commercials where every, com- every comedian was Colonel Sanders. Yeah. That's it, yes. Oops, all Batmans. We'll get, we'll get a... We'll get a lifetime 15 minute movie Batman star, starring five, AC Slater. <laughs> Buy five Batman, get the sixth one free. <laughs> so yeah, this is just it's a it's a bonkers idea. I mean, I understand the character that has translated the most successfully. I don't know know if I want to put say the best, but the most successfully from page two screen has been Batman. But it just seems like they're putting an awful lot of eggs in one bat-shaped basket. <laughs> one bat basket. That's that's a lot of guano. Bat <laughs> skit. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of guano in that bat cave. Yeah, yeah. And along with that, um, I'm not sure if this is full-on news or if it's just speculation at this point. But I believe Michael Keaton has s- stated that he is coming back for at least one of these six Batmans as a Batman. I mean, cool, because Michael Keaton's one of my favorite movie Batman. Oh, yeah. I mean, he couldn't turn his head, but man, that's fun. He was fantastic as as Batman's. Uh, I mean, there's yet to be a live action movie that has been true, super true to the character. I mean, come on, you got Batman Returns and he has no problem, you know, ice and fools. He's such mm-hmm. a reinterpretable character that he is. Days. Yeah, you can do all sorts of things. It's with hard Batman. to say what the correct Batman is. One person's Batman is different than another. <laughs> That's true. It just feels like they're diluting the pool a little too much. Oh and... yeah. I mean, especially with us getting a new, another new Batman film so soon. I mean, do we really have to watch the Waynes die again? Oh man, if each. <laughs> If we have to watch those pearls drop on onto Crime Alley every every two months <laughs> or whatever, yikes, Zaruni! Like, I remember when when Gotham came out, they tallied up at that time how many times we have watched the Wayne family die, and it was like eighteen. Oh, sure, I have no doubt. That's at least that's a lot. At least when Marvel brought in Spider Man, they eluded, but didn't have didn't. Insult our intelligence. Yeah, they understood we were aware of what had happened to Spider-Man. <laughs> is, is the Adam West Batman the only Batman we did, that we did not actually see the Waynes I mean, if you count shot? Batman Beyond. Well, yeah, that's true. Because he's never Bruce Wayne in that entire run. You mean he's always Bruce Wayne? Well, yeah. He's, he's never Batman. He's, he's never not Batman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was Batman for the first, like couple minutes till he has a heart attack a bat heart attack (laughs) (laughs) quick get me my bat aspirin (laughs) my bat defibrillator (laughs) you know he has those oh sure yeah and they're branded appropriately Mm -hmm. oh and harley Harley quinn season two he busts out the uh the 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 shark repellent against king shark yeah fantastic (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, where's my electric car, Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. man. I'm yep. so glad that's getting a season three. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh. They approved that, and they were uh, starting to film uh, Doom Patrol season three as yeah. well. Yeah. Because that, that's one. Doom yeah. Patrol season two was fantastic and even more bonkers than the first season, which is hard to do. <sighs> it's because it's Doom Patrol. Yeah, and I love it. It's great. But yeah, I listen, I like Batman as much as the next the next guy, but it just seems like there's too much. There really is. I mean, even before there was a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I own almost every movie with Batman in it, and it is ridiculous mm-hmm. how much Warner Brothers has beaten Batman over the head. Like, don't get me wrong, I love the character. I really do. I have like a billion Batman comics at home. But it's too much. It is too much. Too much. Let's get some spotlight on some other characters. Or, you know, make a good Green Lantern movie. I'd love that. No, they're, they're never going to touch Green Lantern again. Oh, no, yeah. They, and that's never going to happen. <laughs> they, 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 refer- they, they reference it in Justice League in the beginning. There, You see a yeah, Green but, Lantern on screen. But notice he wasn't in the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he really should have been in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, speaking of characters that should get spotlight, you know who's not 
ever going to get a DC movie spotlight ever again? Cyborg. <laughs> kind of rolls into this next one. Yeah, so they are working on a Flash movie, which is based off um, the comic series Flashpoint, where the Flash runs so fast he goes back in time and stops his mother's murder, murder which and changes then history. somehow causes history to unravel. And create butterfly Earth, effect. I guess, butterfly effect. And create effect. Earth yeah. 2. Yeah. But uh, they're working on that movie, and a Which one of... seems a weird place to take the character at at the very start of its... Yeah. It's a weird pl- first place to go for the Flash. Yeah. Especially since we've had no context of Flash in the other movies, yeah. other than I'm the Flash, I'm, f- I'm smart, and I'm fast. It's it's a weird it's a weird it's a weird direction for sure. But this movie was originally supposed to also feature uh, the character of Cyborg heavily. However, <laughs> the actor of Cyborg, Ray Fisher, has had a very public, mm-hmm. uh, very very public feud with the head of Warner Brothers and DC Films president Walter Hamada. So during the filming of Justice League. I guess uh, I don't know the specifics, so I don't want to put anything in the in the uh, actor's mouth. Everything has quotes around it Every- from this point forward. Yes, everything. Just a, a million invisible air quotes, but apparently, allegedly, allegedly, there was a lot of really uncool stuff going on behind the scenes of the Justice League film directed at Ray Fisher, coming from Zack Snyder as well as comic writer uh, Jeff Johns and others. And Ray Fisher has been very vocal about a lot of these issues. Huge and if I, true. <laughs> a huge if true. And to be honest, I am more inclined to trust this actor than um, this invisible face corporation. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And he has said that he will not work for uh, do any more DC films until the president of DC films has been out has been kicked out of his position so they wrote the character out of um the justice league timeline and now he's gone and will not be coming back and that's even if they even do this flash movie because it seems like ezra miller's been in a lot of trouble too he sure has he sure has it's a, a real muddy water for this whole dc films situation where's our shazam 2 we should that worked that movie worked, and that is the direction they probably should be going. Yeah. But instead of Shazam 2, they're doing Black Adam, the dark, gritty version of Shazam, starring <laughs> The Rock. As Black Adam. Yeah. And then you know, there's also their Suicide Squad reboot. As far as I'm concerned, that is, until I am the movie comes out and it is stated otherwise... I'm considering that movie a completely separate entity that just happens to have cast the same actress for Harley Quinn both yeah. times. Maybe it ties into Birds of Prey. Maybe. That would be great. I would much rather this new one tie into Birds of Prey than Although the it original, tie into the old one. The old one kind of ties into Birds of Prey, though, but not specifically. Not specifically. <laughs> yeah. Boy, just a whole... Man, Birds of Prey was good. Yeah, it was, was was, it was really good. Birds of Prey was better than Wonder Woman 2. I, uh, Wonder Woman 84? Yeah, yeah I agree with that. Yeah, 84, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's kind of wild, like... I never thought I would say that either. How, yeah, right. how hard Warner Brothers and DC stubbed their toes trying to, like, force their superhero universe out there. I'm just thinking, like, just trying to catch up to the... Keeping t- up with the Joneses. Yeah, keeping yeah. up with the Joneses. And I mean, they didn't fall as hard as you know Universal did, <laughs> but man, monsters. yeah, man. the Dark Universe <laughs> with Russell Crowe. That inherently didn't make sense from the beginning. It, it really didn't. It the fact, really the didn't. fact that they had two false starts, <laughs> <laughs> two first movies in their movie franchise, and they both failed. Yeah. I mean. Was the Frankenstein one supposed to be that too? Or was it just supposed to start with Dracula Untold? And then they said, oh, wait, no, The Mummy. It was supposed to be Dracula Untold <laughs> and then The Mummy. No. Uh, there was a Frankenstein, Frankenstein un- movie Unbound or whatever. That was that was a Bride of Frankenstein because they they discovered that, oh, if we based all these movies off of, their, off of these 1930s films, there's no women. <laughs> there's no women leads. Well, they made The Mummy a, a woman until... It wasn't? No, Tom Cruise was the mummy. Yeah. 
With that weird well, not scream. Not at first. But there was a mummy. <laughs> Tom Cruise is the mummy. <laughs> you know what I miss? What a mess. <laughs> League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. <laughs> Remember no. When they released, remember when they released the trailer? <laughs> remember when they released the trailer for the mummy and they forgot to put m- music in it? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> the sounds of the kidding the side of the play. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen That's so I've seen so many like things where they where they where they substitute someone else's scream for that yeah. for that Tom for that Tom Cruise scream. Oh, my favorite was the goofy. The <laughs> that was good. That should be on the soundboard, by the way. I will. I will I, which one? The Tom Cruise or the Goofy? The Goofy. Oh, okay. Goofy. The, the Goofy, goofy one. Okay. Because I could put the Tom Cruise one on there as well. There's no sound effects behind it. Or, or, or that or the Wilhelm. There we yeah. go. Yeah, I'll, I can add that. I can add that. We'll make a list. <laughs> uh, speaking of mummies. Yes. Good segue. Oh, Ooh, you're winning. You're winning it. Uh, so The Rock wants to reboot The Scorpion King. All right. Why, why not, I guess. I, I guess. I mean, I love I love The Mummy and The Mummy Returns with Brendan Fraser. Mm-hmm. I really, really do. Those are fantastic movies. Yes. I mean... If they wanted to to do a dark, a dark universe, shared universe of universal monster movies, it should have started with that mummy. Yeah. That's the tone they should have went for. Yes. Oh yeah. I mean it's it's Indiana Jones with just a little more supernatural. Yep. Yep. Oh there there was always a little bit of supernatural well, in the yeah, Indiana Jones. Yeah. Except but, for that last one because it's aliens and that was kinda of weird. Yeah, but in, in the Indiana Jones there was always like that level of grounded realism yeah. kind of or deniability, maybe. Yeah, plausible Plaus- deniability. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, maybe the world is a little magic. Like, yeah. I mean, Doctor Jones never did see those Nazis' face melts, but he sure did see that guy drink from the the wrong. Uh, oh, the the yeah the the ch- or the the mug that says Jesus on it. Yeah, <laughs> you have chosen poorly, <laughs> Junior. <laughs> you know, I used to think the t- Temple of Doom was the worst Indiana Jones movie. It's not. It is. Or wait, no, Crystal no. Skull. No, yeah, yeah. Really? Wow, Cody. <laughs> I forgot about the Crystal Skull. <laughs> and you should. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't thinking about it. I just Temple of Doom is bad, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not great. It's not. Yeah. Like yeah. I said, I, I haven't even seen the whole thing all the way through. Really? Uh, yeah, we were watching <laughs> it, it on a funny v- story. We were watching it on VHS, and the the VHS player ate it. Oh, really? <laughs> right in the middle. Right it's, in the middle. Oh, so it saved you guys from having to finish Temple of Doom. Yeah, and at that point, when a I'm movie's like, so bad, the yeah. player eats it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I've seen all I need to see. <laughs> so how far did you get? About halfway through. <laughs> uh, so where Indiana Jones saves his hat? It was which like, time? Yeah. <laughs> Right? It was in a combo uh, TV and VCR thing too, so there's no. Getting oh, that there's out. no. No, you're. Oh. No, that's done. That's done. <laughs> and it weighs like a hundred pounds. It was like a little little baby. Oh, oh yeah. okay. So eighty pounds. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Scorpion King, a, a reboot. I mean, the first Scorpion King movie it was fine. It was yeah. okay. Yeah. N- not not including not including the the Mummy Returns. That I saw re- it in theaters. <laughs> You know what? I think I did too. Because I was still on that hype of like, you know, the, the Brendan Fraser mummy. And I'm like, oh yeah, okay. And then they did all those other ones. <laughs> those direct-to-video yeah. ones. Uh-huh. Well, the third one does star Power Ranger. That makes sense. Oh, yeah. That he was a, right. a, a Time Force Blue. Not even a real good Power Ranger. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then and it was like the adventures of young Scorpion King. <laughs> yeah. This is the free rock Scorpion King. That was like the birth of the Acadian or whatever Something it was like called. Something like that, James yeah. Bond Jr. of Scorpion King. <laughs> the young Indiana <laughs> Jones That's Adventures. That's the movie we need. Yeah. Kid Bond. He's Sam fishing the, people the with a Nerf gun. Of, <laughs> the adventures of young Indiana Jones, Bond, James Bond Jr. <laughs> and tiny Scorpion King. <laughs> and the Scorpion Prince. Yeah, Scorpion Prince. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. I'm not. I feel like, other than like the really popular meme page on Facebook, I feel like that level of the mummy has sailed. Like that ship is gone. <laughs> oh sure. Like I saw a T-shirt on Facebook that had a picture of Brendan Fraser, and it said, "The mummy, more like the daddy." <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm on the I'm on the the mummy meme page, and it's it's been shared there a lot. Oh, Actually, I think it's where it came from. Okay, the one that I the one that I've seen, it was like somewhat. This person went to a restaurant. You know, it was one of those restaurants where. Of famous people go and sign their autograph with their picture. They oh, hang yeah, it up Brendan on the Fraser wall. Goes, I'm in the mummy. Bre- Brendan Fraser's signature is Brendan Fraser. I'm in the mummy. <laughs> yeah, that pops up a lot. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, move on to some other stuff. So, the Great Gatsby is now in the public domain, which is cool. But more importantly, people want the Muppets to do a version of the Great Gatsby. Why not? Okay. Except for, except for that it's heavily not appropriate for the Muppets, really. But it would still be good. Well, sure. Yeah. We, we all know it's, what happens in the Great Gatsby and have read it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't either. <laughs> uh, I only have the vaguest idea. There's something with like a green light. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's as and far as 20s. many. <laughs> that's as far as anyone's taking with it. They're going, oh, great, Green Gatsby. There's something green in there. Green light Kermit. Yeah. But no, it would absolutely not work. <laughs> it will super. What if? What if they got? Work. There's what, like a lot of alcoholism and like people die. People die and a lot of yeah. <laughs> what if they? What if they? They took Leonardo DiCaprio and reprise his role, and then everyone else is a Muppet. It still wouldn't be appropriate. It <laughs> still wouldn't work. Oh, no, I'm not saying it would work. I'm just saying. I mean, it would work in, like, early Muppets, <laughs> like, like back in the 70s. Yeah. But not, not, today. not today. Not today. You know, I recently rewatched Muppet Treasure Island, and that is a wonderful film. Oh, yeah, I love that movie. I haven't seen that in forever. Oh, it's we so good. Muppet Christmas Carol at Christmas time, and that is amazing it's very, as well. Yes, uh, those are of a similar time frame, kind oh, of. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, that, that, that was when the Muppets were still yeah. hot. Yeah. That's well. That that's where people are getting this because both of those are public domain stories. Yeah. It it wouldn't work. I'm I'm Gatsby sure there is a better public domain story they could use. Muppets of, of Muppets and Men <laughs> of Muppets. And men. <laughs> Kermit. Oh, Kermit. That, that would what be. What about the bunnies? <laughs> that would actually be really good though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny would be like Sweetums. He, he would. <laughs> Sense and sweet. I don't know. I was trying and to think of Swedish ability. <laughs> and it's a like Jane Austen with just the Swedish chef. <laughs> Actually, a Pride and Prejudice in Muppets would probably work. It'd probably work better than that Pride and Prejudice in Zombies movie. <laughs> oh. Or slash book. Oh. <laughs> that it's was bad. a thing. Yeah. Yeah, that was a thing. That culminated with an actual movie, the, uh, <laughs> the Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. That movie that was, was good, hey, though. That, that was good, that, yeah. That movie's a wild ride. Oh, that one's, yeah, it's it's legit. It's legit. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't have the gravitas of the... Uh, uh, the Daniel Day Lewis Lincoln movie, but man, but can you imagine Daniel Day Lewis fighting zombies? <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> they already they already came up with this Muppet movie in the last Muppet movie, Gonzo with the Wind. <laughs> yes, perfect. <laughs> well, no, we don't want Gonzo being the lead of anything. I remember Muppets from Space and that was terrible. It's okay. <laughs> it's awful. It's okay. It's not. No no one but, needs to know where Gonzo's that's from. That's true. I agree with you there. We did not need to know he was the Also alien. Hulk Hogan is in that movie. I did not and, know that. Yeah, Hulk oh, Hogan no. is he's a bad and he's a bad guy. He's yeah. like an enforcer. It was during his Hollywood Hulk Hogan phase and he was like <laughs> when he was with the NWO and I was do, like do you come remember, on. Do you remember Suburban Commando? Yes. <laughs> Suburban you, Command. Okay. Have you seen that, Cody? No. <laughs> oh. It's a stupid sci fi flick with Hulk Hogan. Christopher and- Lloyd, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Chris, uh, Hulk Hogan is, from, is a bounty hunter from space who crashes in Christopher Lloyd's family garage. <laughs> and he ends up living with the family for a while. Marty the Hulkster's here. Kinda. Yeah. It's a lot of Christopher Lloyd screaming about Laser These aliens. <laughs> they're coming. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, he's like Hulk Hogan trying to be Mad Max yes. from space. Space Mad Max. 
Yes. There, you know what? That that movie was part of a trifecta of Hulk Hogan movies based around the idea that this man is big. Let's put him in situation where big man is funny. So, uh, Mr. Mom. Mr. Mom, Suburban Commando, and uh, Santa with Muscles. Oh, Santa with Muscles. That's right. <laughs> I was thinking the, the arm wrestling one? Uh, no, that's over the top. And that was Sylvester Stallone. Oh, okay. You're thinking of... Um, uh, what was the one where he's the wrestler, where he fights Tiny Lister as Zeus? What is that? It's like the first thing he did that wasn't professional wrestling. Oh, he was in a Rocky movie too, wasn't he? Oh, he was. He was in a Rocky movie. Yeah. Wait, who like was a, in a Rocky movie? Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Is he? he? He was in the beginning of Rocky Four, Rocky Three. No, I forget what his name okay. was. He has a funny name though. Uh, it's the one where Mr. T was the actual bad guy. Oh, because he was Hulk Hogan was only in the beginning. Because it was like Rocky doing a publicity stunt, a boxer versus a wrestler. Wasn't that like Rocky? I think it was Rocky Four. Thunder Lips. Thunder Lips. <laughs> That's thought, it. I thought Rocky Four was the one where he fights the Russian. <sighs> yeah, you're right. Rocky Four. Rocky the, Three. Rocky Three is the one with Clubber Lang. Yeah. Rocky Four is the Russian, and Rocky Five is the one that no one remembers. And Rocky Two is with Apollo Creed. Yeah. Again. <laughs> again. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, Rocky Balboa. Fantastic movie. Really? The sixth one that's not actually called. Yeah. Huh. Fantastic movie gets right back to the roots. It's it's right up there with Rocky one and two in, mm. in terms of like it's like he's retired and he's he owns a restaurant and it's yeah. kinda cool because the uh <laughs> No, it's it's, it's kinda cool. It's like he's finally it's it's like this boxer that is kindly he's like finally he's done. He's is not it doing a deli? Any, it, no, it's like an actual like okay. it's an Italian restaurant. Well, there there is a uh, there's a weird Al song about Rocky owning a deli. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, this is like an Italian restaurant. And it's kind of cool because that uh, the freeze frame in Rocky 2 at the very end where it like yeah. goes to the painting, that painting is like a big mural on the back wall oh. of the restaurant. And uh, I don't know. It's called the Rye or the Kaiser. <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> no, that's good. That's that's a very weird owl name of the song. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's about food. So. Yeah, of, of course. <laughs> of course. I don't know. I, I still like the camp of Rocky Four. Oh yeah. Guess how many Rocky movies I've seen. Same. Zero. Yes, <laughs> it is zero. Uh, well, we need to do. We need to do. And what would what it be now? An eight part mini series of <laughs> no, I haven't seen that because Creed one and two count as no, Rocky movies. No, I haven't punched that. <laughs> Yo, Adrian, I haven't seen yeah. this. Punch and Meat. It's a new podcast. It's called Punch and Punch Meat. Meat. Yeah, there, yeah, that's it. <laughs> we watch watch movies in the freezer of a of a butcher shop. Get Polly's robot as a guest. <laughs> that stupid robot. There's like a punk band called Polly's Robot, and it's because it's based on the name. It's be, it's based on that stupid robot that they bought. <laughs> Rocky's dumb kid. No. Polly's not Rocky's kid. Polly is uh, Adrian's brother. Oh, right. It's it's Rocky's brother-in-law. The 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 drunk that yeah the, the drunk wife beater. He gets turned into a joke in Rocky Four because they buy him a robot. <laughs> I like how Glow had the robot. It was just full of drugs. <laughs> All right, we have time for one more thing. So uh, let's go on the list. Pick one and ramble about it. We might sell MGM. Oh, that's right. MGM's looking or is possibly looking around for somebody to buy all their stuff. Yeah, so, so Disney. Disney. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Disney wants it. No, they want they it's James Bond. Don't they would be buying right. James Bond. Disney right. wants everything. Yeah. And I don't know. I know MGM hasn't really done much with their properties in a while. In a while. Other than James Bond films. Yeah. And not even that many of those. Really, no. But I, I kind of like the idea of multiple companies owning things and not just one huge monopolies <laughs> monopoly yeah. owning owning everything monopolies owning monopolies yeah but uh yeah I guess um they would be buying a, a, a sizable backlog of a bunch of classic movies yeah and which includes uh all of the um uh, Bill and Ted movies actually because uh, MGM at one point bought uh, Orion. Orion, yeah. So they so they would own uh, if whoever buys MGM would own the rights to uh, UHF, the Weird Al movie. <laughs> Who owns Back to the Future? 
Paramount? Universal. 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 Yeah. So not quite there, but whoever ends up buying MGM, if as sale goes through, they're really buying it just for James Bond at this point. That's um, the only big name that they have that's uh, not like right now. Yeah, and you know it's going to go to Disney. I don't want it to go to Disney, but it's going to go to I mean, Disney. I mean, Fox isn't going to buy it. Like D- Disney, Disney owns Fox. Yeah, Disney, Disney owns Fox. Fox. Oh, I mean, okay, okay. Here's featured franchises in the NGM. Let's do it. Let's hear it. James Bond. Yep. Handmaiden's Tale. Right. Rocky. Okay. Oh, Rocky. Hey. hey. Uh, we could have did hey, a better. Oh, hey. <laughs> we could have did a much better transition for this. Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> uh, Pink Panther. Okay. History Channel's the Vikings. Cartoon, the cartoon or the the, the Inspector Clouseau movies. It just probably has a, the inclusive. It, the it just has movies. a picture of the Pink Panther, so I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. Well, then okay. <laughs> uh, legally Blonde. All right. Huh. That's... Stargate. Huh. Oh. And RoboCop. Uh, I think we were guys. I think we were wrong about MGM. <laughs> <laughs> there's some good ones in there. there. There's a few keepers, but they're not gonna do a good RoboCop again. I mean, they could. They could. They can't match the Verhoeven original. That's not gonna. It's. Nah. Let Taika Waititi make a RoboCop movie. Just make let Taika Waititi make everything. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I guess he's a little too G whiz for RoboCop though. Maybe maybe a little. I guess NGN did at least the last Bill and Ted. <laughs> they did the last Bill and Ted, and like I said, I believe they own uh, a lot of the uh, backlog from uh, Orion Pictures. Adam's Family, at least the 2019 one. Oh, okay. Well, uh, listen, we could sit here and read through the MGM (laughs) list all day, but we've actually hit time, so uh, we should probably wrap things up. You've been listening to Nerd Overload. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can find us each and every day over at nerdoverload.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram at Nerd Overload Now. You can email us at staff at nerdoverload.com. You can give us a call on the Nerd Overload hotline. Uh, It's 586-372-8020. Uh, leave a message and we might play it on the show. Uh, what two MGM properties would you like to see in a Freddy vs. Jason style film? I would like to see James Bond fight RoboCop. That would be pretty great. <laughs> I was going to say Rocky vs. RoboCop. Yeah. <laughs> Polly's Robot versus RoboCop. <laughs> Oh, so Real Steel too? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you can follow into all of our back episodes on uh, podcast apps such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and more. And finally, I'd like to thank David Pencil for the use of our intro and outro. You can find more of his stuff over at davidpencil.com. So again, thank you all for tuning in, and we will be back next week. I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs>